that candidates who have not even arrived yet will feel the added pressure and the burden of not only satisfying some of their disgruntled supporters, but even their donors. A lot of money hangs on this. A lot of money that's been held up because of this, waiting for this to see what happens and whether any of these candidates can break out of the pack once and for all. A little bit more than 24 hours from now, we shall know ahead of that first debate and then, of course, the second debate. And when all is said and done, who emerges as the premier front runners? Will any of the poll positions change? Will any of that donor activity change? Right now, we go to Rick Perry, the former presidential candidate himself, former governor of the state of Texas. You know this process well, uh, Governor. It can be very unforgiving. It can be very relentless. And then it's on to the next debate. It's on to the next uh, donor clash, if you will. And a lot of those donors, we're told, are sitting on their money. They're holding tight. Uh, they want to see how their candidates do or how other candidates with whom they've not aligned might do. Who do you think has momentum? Well, certainly uh, there are a number of very, very capable candidates out there. I think that's one of the reasons that we've seen uh, a bit of this uh, sitting back, if you will, keeping your powder dry uh, of uh, those that are going to be making uh, contributions all across this country are those just that are going to give their support and, and give their uh, their good names to these candidates. They're sitting back and they're waiting. And uh, I think rightfully so as we go through this process, uh, there's not a rush in the sense of uh, we've got to get this done right now. We're getting closer. I think what we're less than 100 days until uh, it kicks off in Iowa. But uh, I'm, I don't perceive the pressure uh, from the moderator there uh, tomorrow. Uh, you sound pretty cool and calm that you're, uh, uh, you're ready to do <laughs> well, this. Well, you know, Governor, I was thinking that one thing, depending on the debate or who was hosting it, but one thing is very clear through various uh, debates, we've seen that the non establishment candidates are doing very well. And established candidates with established track records, such as yourself, such as Governor Scott Walker, this fine state of Wisconsin, they don't seem to be rewarded. Say what you will of the people who like you or didn't like you or like Scott Walker, didn't like Scott Walker. You're not really richly rewarded for a track record. And I'm wondering what that means, especially to a Jeb Bush who's feeling the heat. Say what you will of him, a successful track record is eight years of a Florida governor, but that it comes down to whether he has the energy or the enthusiasm or the pizzazz. You, you've heard it all before. It's weird because <laughs> it's been dragging on a while, hasn't it? Well, it has been. And, you know, it, I think this is one of the few professions, if you will, that uh, uh, you're experience is not necessarily rewarded and, and that people are listen I get it people are totally upset with Washington DC and for good reason you got a president of the United States that uh, I, I I don't think he uh, necessarily believes in the Constitution when it comes to working with the uh, legislative branch and, and having a, a check and balance system you got him look at what's happening with uh, uh, with Gitmo and with the process that's going on there where he just vetoes something and says you know, I'm going to go off on my own. So people are really upset with Washington. And they make that, I think, extension to that's just government uh, without necessarily making the decision that it's this is Washington and a state, you know, whether it's Florida, whether it's Wisconsin, whether it was Texas, uh, some of these other states that the governors are running uh, that have pretty good track records. So uh, but with all of that said, uh, this process will work itself out. Uh, I hope uh, we hear some good questions uh, along the line of uh, what do these candidates think about the Tenth Amendment? Are they going to uh, devolve this power back to the states like our founding fathers meant? I think that would be a good question for one of the moderators to ask tomorrow. <laughs> du duly noted, Governor. I do <laughs> want to ask you, though, a little bit about the fact that we've gone on this long, now five months or so into the Trump candidacy, where he's still leading the pack. Ben Carson, not too far behind, depending on the poll, they're splitting it. And if you look at uh, various polls, sir, more than half express an interest in an outside-the-box candidate like a Trump, like a Carson. If yeah. I want to throw a Ted Cruz in there, certainly a different type of senator, a maverick senator, you're up to 60 percent of the vote that does not like traditional politicians. Normally by this time, that kind of a, a fleeting flirtation is just that. It's done and, and over with and on to substance yeah. or substantive traditional candidates. Not to besmirch yeah. them, but what do you make of that and how long this I, has gone on? I, I, again, I go back to this is really reflective of the American public having had it with Washington, D.C., Democrats and Republicans. And, and I lay a lot of the blame at the foot of the President of the United States 
who must believe that uh, this gridlock is good for him and good for his political party. It's certainly not good for America. I don't think it's good for the world. Uh, we see a lot of decisions being pushed off or not made. Uh, this war against terror, and, and we continue to see, uh, you know, half measures at best. I mean, 50 special operators we're going to send to go fight ISIS. We need to be making a real effort with our allies across this, uh, this globe to stamp out, uh, to snuff out uh, this extraordinary cancer that's uh, being uh, pushed across the, the, the world. I mean, but it doesn't seem uh, to but register I, but on I the understand. top. But, but you know, it doesn't seem to register yeah. on the top, right? I mean, you're out of veteran. You were a veteran of the race, and the, uh, and, and now well, of course, Lindsey Graham's the, the, leaving, and he's so the only Graham veteran well. in this. Yeah. So so maybe these issues aren't so top of mind. Uh, if that's the case, does that worry you? Well, yes, it does worry me. I, I hope that uh, we go through a process, and I think tomorrow's debate is really important uh, to have a grown-up debate, to have a debate that really digs in and dwells on the issues that are important and not these I got you questions that all too often uh, we heard. And I hope the candidates uh, will take the seriousness of this as well uh, and, and this not be a, uh, you know, an attack of uh, uh, the people on the stage with them, that they really talk about their vision for our country, the optimism that they have. The, this is an extraordinary country and we're a resilient country. Listen, we made it uh, through four years of Jimmy Carter. I think we'll make it through the eight years of Barack Obama, but it's going to take some very focused, disciplined leadership that has a vision that captures the, uh, the spirit and the will of the American people. And one of these candidates, I my prayer is that uh, they'll grab that, they'll take it, uh, well, and might, we'll have might, the best be years aware. of our lives ahead of us. We, we should be aware as well the noise, certainly at the corner wall of Broadway, had a big sell-off today. A lot of that seems to be based on the information the economy is pretty good and that the Federal Reserve now is going to hike interest rates if we could take a peek at what happened today. Um, you know, we have some interest rates moving up very smartly, depending on the the Treasury note or bond year, we're talking about uh, anywhere from five-year highs to six-month highs. But they're highs. And, and a lot of people seem to be sensing the Federal Reserve is going to raise interest rates. Seeing as you were a critic of the Federal Reserve, and many of your colleagues were at the time and are, um, would you embrace that? Would you think it's a good idea for them to say, yeah, go ahead, raise your interest rates. It's the best thing you could do right now. Well, I don't know. I mean, the, the fact is that... Uh, you know, if the economy is doing that much better, uh, then that's certainly a, a indicator. Uh, but you know, I don't feel it out there. I don't think the average American person uh, feels that this economy is doing that much better. We've got uh, a record number of people out of the workforce. So, uh, you know, at this particular point in time, I, I, I get it about uh, uh, what the Federal Reserve's role is, is to uh, kind of put the foot on the gas or the foot on the brake regarding what's going on in the economy. But right. I don't know whether it's me or whether it's just, uh, and in the state of Texas, the economy is doing about as good as anywhere in the country, but I'm not sure it's time for us to be raising our interest rates. All right. Well, watch very closely. Governor, it's always a pleasure, sir. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah.